Hey guys, Herbal Prepper here, and today we're going to talk about an extremely useful tree. Now this tree is often seen as a nuisance more than it is useful, and I hope to turn you guys around from that thought process. I want to explain to you a few ways that you can use this tree uh, to be an extremely useful tree to you in the future and um, not only be extremely useful such as burning wood and uh, things of that nature but also its medicinal value. Okay so this is the sweet gum tree. Now many people see this as a nuisance because they step on these little um, these little balls that the tree puts off here, the sweet gum balls, and either they, it, they just step on them and it bothers them or uh, it's all over their yard and they don't know what to do with them. They don't want to compost them because they're scared that the seeds are going to bust out and they're going to have um, new growth in their compost or, you know, so a lot of people have actually started making door wreaths out of the brown ones, which is actually interesting. You'll see all that kind of stuff on Pinterest. Um, so that's a good way to use the tree if you want to keep the tree. Now hopefully by the end of the video you'll actually want to keep a few of the trees around. What happens is people get a grudge against a tree that they feel is invasive and the tree is not invasive at all really guys. Um, it's just a opportunity seeker. It sees a, a place where it would like to plant its roots and it grows. Uh, it is not at all invasive. Kudzu is invasive and even kudzu has its medicinal and uh, edible value. So when you're looking at the sweet gum tree, um, you can look at it for more than just a nuisance. Uh, the medicinal value is high. Guys, it's great for hypertension. So you're going to have, uh, if you have high blood pressure, you can have this tree be extremely useful for high blood pressure. It's a great anti-inflammatory. Um, a lot of people actually would chew the resin, which is kind of how the name came along, sweet gum. Um, they would actually chew the resin from the tree if they had inflamed gums or things like that. Um, it's great. The Native Americans would use it for almost everything. Guys, they'd use it for um, diarrhea. They would use it because it's got tannins in it and it's astringent. Uh, they would use it for, uh, like I said, wounds and, you know, in your mouth and anything where they would need some anti-inflammatory um, properties, they would use the sweet gum tree, and it's so abundant, why not use it? Uh, you can use everything from the leaves, the bark, the resin, which comes out of the bark area, so if you chop into the tree or tap the tree, you're going to get resin. Um, so you can use the leaves, the resin, the bark, and uh, these nice little pretty balls here. So today what we're going to be using is, is the balls, and the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to explain to you a little bit more about it. So. Aside from the fact that it's great for anti-inflammatory and it's as an anti-inflammatory and it's great for um, high blood pressure, it's also extremely, extremely useful as a flu aid. So if you have the flu or a virus, this is going to be an extremely useful tree to you. Now, I'm sure everyone is familiar with Tamiflu. If you are sick and you go to the doctor and he says you have the flu, and he's probably going to prescribe you Tamiflu unless it's been past about 48 hours. Then he will say, there's nothing I can do for you. Go home. So reason being is because the main ingredient in Tamiflu is shikimic acid. Shikimic acid is in the sweet gum tree and not only the sweet gum tree, but star anise. Now, a star anise is originally where they decided to pull the uh, shikimic acid from. So quick note here, guys, if you look at the sweet gum and, ooh, and the star anise, you'll see it looks very similar. Spikes. Um, a lot of times, Native Americans, a lot of people say, well, how do Native Americans know what to use things for? Um, as, as an herbalist, the only thing I can say is you kind of go around and you kind of get a feel for things. People are so out of touch with nature nowadays, it's not even funny. But you kind of get a feel for things. You know, a lot of times people say well, it'll, it'll resemble what it's going to help. Uh, this is resembling bacteria or virus, so it's going to help that. Or, and you know, there's really, um, there's really a, not a lot of way to explain that to people without just saying you just kind of know in a way, you know. Um, and then you gain experience by using the plant or the herb or tree or things of like that nature. So, shikimic acid actually is going to stop the reproduction of the virus. Now, viruses 
are RNA. They have no DNA, so they have to have a host. In order to have a host, that means that they can now uh, spread and live on. Uh, this can be an animal or it can be us. Either way, it needs to bust out and start replicating. So what shikimic acid does is it actually stops, inhibits that reproduction, reproduction phase. And the reason why it does that is because it actually blocks them from being able to bust out. They can't bust out and start spreading and reproducing. The virus dies and can't spread and then you get better quicker. Now, with getting better quicker, you don't tend to have the same effects. So some people can have the virus for anywhere from you know, the time when they start to feel it on up to seven to 10 days, maybe even longer in an unhealthy person. And they feel the effects, body aches, headaches, things of that nature. Well, if you start the shikimic acid early, you, one, don't have the virus in you that long because it's gonna die, your body's gonna shed it out. Um, and then two, you can actually cut down on the actual pain and suffering that you go through while dealing with the virus as your body is um, trying to rid yourself of it. So now that you know that, uh, quickly I'm going to explain to you how you're going to use this. So guys, really what you're going to do here is you're going to turn this into a tincture. And the reason why you want to turn it into a tincture is because it can last. So you can make this now and it will last you until winter and even through winter. Um, you can make teas out of this, guys. Uh, so you can uh, cut some bark off. You want to do the inner bark where the blood of the tree is at. And you're going to cut that off and then you can um, you know, boil or decoct it and then drink that. You can sweeten it if you'd like. Um, and it's going to have a calming effect even. Uh, a lot of times if you combine certain herbs with a warmness, so the warmness of the water will kind of help to relax you. Um, and this kind of works really well with chamomile tea. If you drink chamomile tea cold, it doesn't tend to have as much of an effect on you as it does with the warmth. Warmth kind of breaks everything open, allows you to sweat and allows things to move and things of that nature. Okay, so uh, you can have a, a tea, you can make a tincture, so you can make a tincture out of this, the bark, the leaves, um, or the resin. So the tree is not only useful for, uh, you know, high blood pressure and resin and using the tree to burn, it has medicinal value as well. And I'm going to go ahead and get my little hammer out and we're going to show you how to do this. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you just want to kind of bust into the, um, the tree or the uh, ball, excuse me. So the inside of the ball will kind of look a little something like this. Now as it matures, you'll start to see these little seeds here. I don't know if the camera can see that, but you'll start to see that these seeds will, um, will get you know, darker and bigger and more defined. Cut open a brown one, you'll kind of know what I mean. Um, or let me just show you here with this RNA. How you can see how you can see the seeds on the inside? It'll look a little bit like that, guys. So basically what you're gonna do from this point is the shikimic acid in the star anise is about 7%. That's the reason why star anise is what a lot of the uh, pharmaceutical companies use because it has a higher amount of the shikimic acid. However, uh, sweet gum runs about 3, 3.5%, which is actually pretty good, be it that the tree is so abundant, okay? The star anise is not as abundant, okay? Um, so you're gonna have an infertile seed and a fertile seed. The infertile seed is going to be the one that typically does not have a, uh, you know, a wing. Um, and the reason why is because the tree wants that to obviously fly away. The fertile seed, it will. Um, but you don't have to go through and pick them out simply because it doesn't have enough shikimic acid in it. Just bust it open. And if you want to, remember I've always told you guys to expose as much surface area as possible. This allows for... Um, the tincture to pull out more when it's macerating and um, you know there's really no way you can use your knife if you want to do it I just happen to be doing it this way um, on a plate that way I could do it inside so you just want to kind of bust it open a little bit let me just kind of give you a quick show here just bust it open and they're fairly soft whenever it's um, whenever it's a new new growth and it's so fragrant guys you can smell all of that medicinal value so you're just gonna chop this up uh oh let me 
one hit the floor. All right. So, guys, whenever you feel the flu or a virus or cold, I keep losing the balls here, coming on, all you need to do is uh, go ahead and tincture this up for winter. And if you feel like you're getting sick, even if you don't know if it's the flu or not, guys, you can actually, you can actually use this regardless and it's going to help it's going to have my antimicrobial properties to it and all of that so you'd rather be safe than sorry you want to catch that virus as soon as possible you want to prevent it from being able to spread and the quicker you catch it the less severe your sickness is going to be and then you will be able to be back on your feet and possibly even not have to to be bedridden for a day or two um, you find that when you take the Tamiflu you'll actually feel better regardless of the fact that you actually do have the flu. Whereas some person who does not take it might just want to sit on the sofa or in bed all day. So it will not only reduce the time that you're sick, but also give you um, less pain. So you'll have to deal with less pain and it's anti-inflammatory, so it's going to have all those good properties. And then you don't have to worry about the... Um, the side effects of dealing with maybe some of the Tamiflu. Some people have had some side effects of it. Uh, some people it works for, some people it doesn't. Um, so from here, guys, what you're going to do is now that you have prepared your plant material, you're just going to pour your alcohol over the top of it. Now I've already pre-measured here. And you're just going to pour your alcohol until it covers it up. Now, be it that this is fresh, guys, that I just busted up, um, I just picked this about an hour ago, be it that it is fresh, you're going to need to make sure that you have a pretty high uh, volume of alcohol here. You want to make sure that your proof is, I don't know, you, at least 100 proof. You really don't want to do anything less than that uh, for a few reasons. One, it's really expensive uh, water because 100 proof is 50% water and 50% um, alcohol. And two, because you're using fresh material which contains water in itself, you do not want to breed bacteria. Your alcohol is not only an extractor, it's also a preserver. So guys, from here, you're just going to continue to um, let it soften up and you want to let it go for at least six weeks, maybe a little longer. You might need to add some more alcohol if you choose. But from there, guys, that's really it. You're just going to strain it up and you're going to use it. Um, the, the dosage really depends on the body of the person and so on and so forth. You can use anywhere from, you know, a half a teaspoon, uh, a few 20 drops to 30 drops. It really just ranges uh, based on the person. So guys, I hope that you don't see the sweet gum tree as a nuisance any longer. I hope that you see it as medicinal and I hope the video was a blessing to you. Until next time.